I'm sure you have all seen those beautifully artfully designed anchor charts in other teachers classrooms who seem to have all the artistic abilities. But what happens if you don't have those abilities like me? Have no fear. I've got you covered. Hello, I am Mrs. P. Tarleton. Let's get started creating some anchor charts that you can do without any artistic ability. And then I'm going to show you how to print them and have them poster size very easily. So first we're gonna head on over to a Google spreadsheet and you gotta decide, do you want it to be horizontal or vertical layout of your anchor chart? You go to file, page setup, and change your dimensions. Eight and a half by 11 if you want it vertical or 11 by eight and a half if you want it horizontal. Then you're going to go ahead and go to insert and then insert a shape. I like all these options. It kind of gives me a quick and easy little setup, something a little fancier than normal. There's different scrolls, there's cloud bursts, there's different kinds of things that you could use for your title. What I like to use is this one right here under call out. It's a little scroll. Go ahead and add that as my title. Left click, hold down and drag across. It's going to be highlighted gray. I like to keep that white as much as possible. It helps with printing. So highlight it, go up to the fill bucket, click on that and choose white. Now the border, I don't mind having a little bit of color in there and not too bad with the ink on that one. So I click the color that I want. I can change the size of the outline to make it bigger and bolder. I can even make it dashed line if I wanted to, but we're gonna keep it solid for this time. That's a nice little scroll there. Click on it. You can type in your title right in there. Oops, if you see that red line, go ahead and right click and correct those typos. Now I left click, highlight it, and I'm going to increase the font, make it nice and big and bold. That's a little too big. So I'm going to just put it down a little bit until it fits straight across. I like that. Now I want to change the font. Something about Arial just kind of plain to me. Now I'm going to go to Bubblegum Sans. That's one of my favorite fonts to use. And if you don't have Bubblegum Sans, you can go to the top at more fonts and add it there. Choose Bubblegum Sans and then you'll notice the size changes. I can actually increase my font size now to fill my space again because it was a little bit smaller with that font. That looks good. Now I know with triangle congruence, I'm going to have four different sections I need. So go to insert and then shape again and I'm going to get the rounded corner rectangle here and make it about the size that I want. Right there that red line shows me that it goes halfway across the page. Duplicate it. Control D will duplicate it. But I'm seeing some gaps in there. I'm not sure that that's what I want. So let's make the first one a little bit bigger. And Control D will duplicate it again. That looks like it's going to fit. I'm going to slide that one up a little bit. That's looking good. Now see those two bars, those blue bars on the right side? That's how you know both of your shapes are the same exact size. So make them the same exact size. Once you get those vertical bars that show the height is the same, we're perfect. Again, I'm going to change the fill. I'm going to make it white on the inside. Again, I don't mind a little bit of border on using my ink and make a little thicker on the outline of my shape. When I highlight them, left click, hold it down. Control D will duplicate that shape. And then I'm going to just adjust them and move them around and get them situated exactly how I want them. So I want them to be just a certain way. I want it to look visually appealing, be able to hold all my information just like I need. Once you're satisfied with the way it looks, then you can start adding your information. Then go to insert word art. That's going to give you something nice, big and bold. You can have a different fill color compared to the border of the letter, which is really a nice feature. Adjust the size and then you can go up to the fill bucket and it'll choose what color you would like for the fill. That's kind of bright. I think I'm going to change that up a little bit. And you can have a different color for the outline, which is really nice about word art. With it highlighted, Control D will duplicate it so you can keep it exactly the same size. Notice those red lines show that it's horizontally lined up with the SSS in the first box and vertically it's in the center of my shape with that other red line. Get all my titles put into each of my boxes. Holding down control, highlight both and it'll control D will copy both of them and duplicate it. 
and just drag it down and they're gonna be perfectly in the right spot. Double click on each of them individually and you can change it to whatever title you need. I'm gonna pull those down a little bit. They look like they're a little too much to the top. That's better. Inserting the text box so I can insert the text that I want. And if the size needs to be a little bit bigger, I can stretch out my area that I want for my text box or I can make my text bigger just by increasing the size slightly. Let's make the text box a little wider. You need special characters like the congruent sign or the triangle symbol. You go right there and just type in triangle and it'll give you all kinds of options for triangles or in my case I use congruent. Once you click on the symbol it will automatically add it to your poster. See there I have two of them now. I don't need to. So now finish filling out all your information. Go to insert images and I usually just search the web. I'm looking for a PNG usually with a transparent background often. Once you find the image that's perfect for your poster just go ahead and click on it and then click insert. Then you just have to adjust the size need it to be. Arrange everything. Once you get your poster exactly like you like it you're going to download it as a PDF and then you're going to download if you don't already have Adobe Acrobat Reader. It is totally free. It's going to make printing these posters wonderful. It's going to be so, so easy. We want to have just the single slide. So go file, make a copy of just that one slide so that it doesn't open them all up in Adobe Acrobat Reader. We don't need all of them, just one. Then once you have just that one slide, you're going to save it as a PDF. Go to File, Download as a PDF document and go find your image and open it now with your Adobe Acrobat Reader. Now that you've gotten it open with your Adobe Acrobat Reader, go to Print and don't forget right here you must click Poster. Click on Poster and this is where the magic happens. Once you click on Poster, you can scale it to whatever size you want. Do you want to use two pages, four pages, six pages? If you increase the scale to 190%, then you have to click over here with this overlap and then it shows you exactly what it's going to look like, including the dashed lines. It shows exactly how it's going to break up on four separate sheets of paper. See those dashed lines? And my four categories is really going to be broken up nicely if I print it with four pages. If I want to make it bigger because four pages is only going to be about a 17 by 22 inch. If I wanted the 24, 25 inch by 36 inches, I need to go to 290%. Now it's on nine sheets of paper and that will give me my 25 and a half by 36 inches. And then you just print it at whatever size you want. I think with this particular one, I'm going to stick with the four pages, which is 17 by 22 inches. If you were to go to Staples or a print shop, the 18 by 24s run about $15, $16 and the bigger ones, 24 by 36 inches are $31. So you're saving a great amount of money by printing them yourself. Press print and you're done. Hope you found this helpful. Remember, step out, be uniquely wonderful you and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.